Hi everyone, welcome to our third installment of the Startup Pueblo interview series. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with my friend, my colleague, a great businesswoman here in Pueblo, Nikki Hart. Welcome, Nikki. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Good to be here. Good. I'm so glad you could take the time to talk with us today um, because I know you have a lot to share. <laughs> Always. <laughs> um, and we've been able, fortunate enough to work on several projects together the last three years. So um, that's why I consider you a friend, and I think you do have some valuable information to share with people. So let's just dive right into this interview, okay? So tell everyone what business you own. Well, I, um, I'm actually a multi-entrepreneur, but everything does go under my Digital Heart Media Marketing Agency and Creative Studio. Okay. So would you like to tell everyone what Digital Heart Media is? So everything that I do falls under a lot of what I consider creative services and marketing. So Digital Heart Media is an agency that promotes for small businesses, and we create everything from websites, graphic design. It's shifted lately to a lot more video service and interactive websites and animation and pretty much anything that you look at in the world that is a promotion we've been part of especially locally here in Southern Colorado. Okay. I don't know if anyone got to see it but if you were at the uh, Christmas tree lighting at the courthouse and you saw the pictures on social media that was all this individual right here <laughs> okay it looked spectacular I was flabbergasted it Thanks. was a wonderful event um, you did a really good job so tell us why you chose Pueblo. I know a little bit of history, but let's yeah. tell everyone. So uh, I def it was an easy decision, honestly, and uh, to this day, grateful. I grew up here since I was three years old. grew up on a ranch in Beulah, so this has been my home for my family. And going to school here, never really thought of leaving. So graduate of CSU Pueblo and Pueblo West High. I know that's a big deal. But when you say <laughs> Pueblo West High, it's not the same because uh, it's not a city high school. But this is my home. Went to school here. And so essentially when looking for a career and knowing that I initially went into the arts, um, art is actually my degree, not communications. They go hand in hand though. And looking for a job, it, I was naturally going to be here. And I didn't start out of school though with my job full time. I did it in um, conjunction with a full time job as a marketing director at the Art Center. So that worked really well to do that job, learn more, be with different people and not just go full on into my business. So I did both for about five years years. Um, but choosing Pueblo, this, again, it's my home. I wanted to see opportunities to grow. And back in 2007, I saw a, there's a, there were people doing what I did, but not at the scale. And they weren't using newer technology. It was brand new in social media and the web particularly. So that was a big area to grow into. So ultimately, there was a need. There was an audience here in a small community, and it was appealing. All right. Well, that seems you just partially answered my other question right there with that. Um, so what made you decide to do the small business, be a small business owner? I know you said there was a need, people weren't using the technology, but mm -hmm. were you nervous to make that leap? You know, not a steady paycheck, anything <laughs> I like know, that? Right? <laughs> I know, and it was, it, some things are made for you, I've noticed in business. I've always, I always wanted to be my own boss. I know there's a lot of those cliches with business owners, and, and I do well in that realm, working with others. I also like working with more than one organization for a goal, so naturally it was is going to be my own business and running something and being the reason behind it. But personally, there was a pretty big reason for it. And with things in my life and some challenges, it's ultimately something people can't take away from me. It's right. in my control to be able to say, hey, this is what I want to work on. I started in a really bad economy in 2007. And so it was an opportunity to say, hey, I can do this. And even when things change, I can control that and work with people on various projects that I like to do. So some of it's that, but it's also just I also intentionally keep it small. I, my industry, this could be a big job with 200 and some staff, but I intentionally like to keep it intimate and small and work with small teams okay. on it. All right. Well, that kind of answers part of the other question about your journey. Mm -hmm. So you decided that this was something that you wanted to do. You had a need. And then one of the big things that entrepreneurs always say is, I go into this so I can control things. So definitely <laughs> heard you say that. You can control what you're doing. So when you started in a bad economy, okay, 
how did you get customers? You know, how did you get yourself going? Because mm -hmm. I know new small businesses, they're a little nervous now starting mm -hmm. after COVID and with the high inflation and things like that. So they're worried what happens next. So how did you make it work in the bad economy? So I will share two things, one back in 07 and then actually end with the pandemic because there are two Perfect. bookmark ends of, of my career over 15 years. And so back in 07, it was different than it is now. But I will say one of the things, and after working with over 200 businesses, I have seen people launch a lot of businesses out of passion and this dream that they've been told um, through different walks of life and business coaches and different people saying that. And while I love what I do, and I'm definitely in the right field for the arts, and it is a quote passion, the business doesn't exist because it's a passion. It exists because of a need. Okay. And so it, at first, even in a good and a bad economy, it's identifying a need. And I'm in an industry with media that has changed dramatically because of the internet. And it's been able to shift. And so when we fast forward to the pandemic, I am not just a graphic designer and I'm not just a web designer or a video um, videographer and producer. I'm all of those things, they feed each other very well and they've ebbed and flowed as the needs have changed. And I often have told people that if I would have stayed zeroed in just on graphic design, I'd be struggling as a business, especially in the pandemic when events weren't happening right. and I wasn't designing event things. So it's that ability to fill the need that truly exists in this community and other communities, meeting that with the skills and what I like to do, but then being able to say, hey, this is going to change. We need to now offer this. And some businesses can do that a lot easier than others. I have clients that are struggling right now because of that, because their industry is not as flexible. Right. Right. That, that really does make a lot of sense, you know, because it's like you can have an idea but if nobody wants it right. and you don't have a value that's going to set you apart from anyone else, your business isn't going to be successful. Right. So you're absolutely right about a need to fill a need. And your business has probably quad quadrupled, I should say, you know, <laughs> since the pandemic. Yeah. You know, how do you turn people away? Do you refer them to other people? What are, what are you doing when you can't take it on now? Yeah, so I struggle with that. And it's hard to say no because you. I come from this like, what if I say no and I need this fill to come in. And my business has shifted to, um, I don't like to say I've purged clients and I, I normally retain clients. I'm very grateful for that. So I don't lose a lot of people, but naturally some projects come and go. I've gotten to a point where I've had to get very clear on what I want to work on and where yeah. I'm good at. And that has changed to being marketing approaches like full marketing i want to be with a client long term i'm not a assembly shop to just do quick turnarounds on certain items i want to stick with you grow your brand create assets and and be part of that so the projects i do now largely feed to that okay. does that mean i do one-offs absolutely i've also hired i used to um i was a small team of two of us for the longest time now there's four of us that's helped but i'm going to cap how much we scale on that um I'm kind of a poster child locally where you don't need a team of 50 to do the work of two. So right, it's right. not about um, scaling people per se, but sometimes we do have to just say, no, that's not a right fit. Now referring is tough. Uh, we are in a small market and there are definitely people that have popped up that do what I do and forming relationships with them. But I am, I will say in an industry that could use some support and some other people doing what we do to help with that workload. There's an abundance of, of what I do. And so there's room for growth to be able to share that right. and depending on what the service is I lack in being able to safely refer depending on what it is okay. um, but the networking and the group is, is huge and we do share work back and forth uh, depending right. on what it is okay so do you think that it's going to shift again the marketing because right now we see an overflow of flyers to market events mm -hmm. and everybody's on social media now and things like that and do you think consumers are going to kind of glaze over eventually and we're going to have to come up with a new idea again now <laughs> yeah it's okay. definitely oversaturated um there's two things that i see the media is going to shift and when i say media it's a big term both from the news media and then the social media platforms mm -hmm. so uh one thing i have shifted in media buying and advertising is actually a big thing that quadrupled for me in the last few years. And I see this refocusing and people that do this 
well are going to know that we have a lot of choice and how you choose is going to be based on still those core your audience what you're offering and where your people are and being very strategic about it and this means that you have a whole bunch of choices but you don't have to be on all of them one of the best things that I did during the pandemic was get people to not focus on Facebook and they thought oh this is such a relief because it's overwhelming and it didn't do well for them but Google search maybe was the right thing for them right. so it's really looking at what are all your options and where do we maximize and we also don't control social media uh, Facebook may be around for a while it may not so we're gonna need to ebb and flow just as traditional media has changed to be more online okay. but in a market like this there's also our offline components that I like to focus on and people who don't have access to the internet and all of these choices but I see the media becoming less less of a vehicle we're gonna own more of our content kind of like what we're doing right now right you're owning this message to say I want this to go out on these channels and that's what I see shifting you're going to rely less on the third party more on yourself to tell your story and then you use the right channels for that okay all right that's a really good point because you're always trying to figure out you see one person doing something for marketing and then you see someone say oh that's working for them and then they take <laughs> that idea and now over the last year you just see that everybody's doing similar things now yeah, so and so we've got to look at it to absolutely. change it up a little bit you and know? I have a great quote and it's funny that you said that because I told Tiffany who is fanta fantastic and we're both CSU alums and that's the other thing I've hired alums from both PCC and CSU mm -hmm. but we had this conversation our mantra of the year is do you want to copy the thing or the results Oh, because see. there's a lot of copycats. I want to copy the billboard placement that so and so competitor did, or I want to copy the website page that so and so did, but we don't know their results. So, do you just want to copy the thing or the results? That is a good way to think about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll have to remember that, T. <laughs> <laughs> so, going back to when you started, okay, and if you could tell your past self something new, what would you like to tell yourself about getting started? What would you share with people that you would do different? Would you do anything different? Would you keep it the same? Where would you go with that? So I'm a pretty big self-starter, so there's not a lot that I look back at and go, oh, I wish I would have done that different. I'm a planner, or strategy. So there's nothing I totally screwed up on in there. But one thing I would say is people really matter. Who you align with, who you associate with truly matters. Whether it's a good relationship or a bad relationship, um, I'm lucky to call you a friend. We work together. There's a lot that we align with we don't always agree on everything and that's totally fine we agree most of the time though but 99 percent of the time everybody of the time. Um, <laughs> but those relationships matter everything I do today can always be traced back to a person and a decision and a connection that brought that together so never underestimate that especially in small towns big deal um, yeah. everyone is connected in some way and I've always been grateful to have really good strong relationships and be able to build from that it's so nice to just pick up the phone and be like hey let's make this happen and we know what we're trying to accomplish right so that hands down the other thing is taxes are the bane of every business's existence and even I to this day that's an area that still blows my mind but I do all that myself um, but finding then this will lead into other discussions but aligning with some of those areas you may not be good at there's a lot of resources and connections that you can make to fill that gap but I will say out of all the businesses I've worked with, it's usually that that people trip up. Right. That's that how do I get this going? What's the logistics and legalities behind a business? It's easy to come up with the idea, but the actual execution and all of that in order right. is another thing. And to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row. And timing know? matters. Yes, it does. You do that now so you're not killing yourself. A right. lot of times I'm like, I'm grateful for my past self. She thought of my future self. <laughs> and sometimes I forget that I did that. <laughs> but it matters. It helps. Yes. It definitely is something that you need to think about, you yeah. know, because I had someone call in and like, well, what do I do for taxes? Yeah. And I'm like, we need to get you a bookkeeper or a tax yeah. Oh, I never thought of that. And it's I was a like, lot. We've mentioned that multiple times, and that's the one thing that they forget. Yeah. And one quote that one of the authors um, that we use for here for says, you wouldn't fly a plane without a pilot. And that's the same thing I use about the accounting. You wouldn't, you know, yeah. fly the plane without that. So... Good, good idea. Okay, next question. What advice, okay, you've kind of given some, but this will be direct. 
can you give to future entrepreneurs about opening businesses? You just said, you know, get all your ducks in a row, make mm -hmm. sure you understand your taxes, but what else would you give them? So at the end of the day, I think the biggest thing, regardless of the industry that you're working at, is your business is about people. I have yet to find a business that doesn't involve a human. That's uh, true. <laughs> so it, it, it is something to look at we all are different people and we all have different outcomes. So there's stress to being a business owner. I'm actually seeing my sister go through this as she's navigating it new. And there's a almost like an ideology to business ownership, like, oh, it's so special and oh, it's so awesome. And there's some awesomeness obviously to it. It's why we still stick with it. But you are giving up a lot. You're giving up some security. You're giving up sometimes health benefits. You're giving up things that jobs with an employer would provide you. So you're constantly trading for things. And it's something to just be realistic about. Okay. It, is, it is extremely rewarding and extremely fun, but there are different things that you have to bring as someone responsible for that and if you're good at running things leadership seeing um, almost like a crystal ball into the future knowing where things are going can direct a team can come up with ideas then business ownership can be really good and as I've said before it's not great to just build things because I love a thing and realizing the challenge but it's oh so rewarding and what's also awesome about being in business is the ability to pivot and build on things I find a lot of business owners are multiple business owners yes. and I made that comment so everything I do is around my art but I also do photography services I also sell my art on merch I've taught online uh, graphic design skills so an entrepreneur of mine tends to be that way in multiple things right and we know what we're good at we know what we're not good at and we can find people to fill slots that we're not good at um, and really grow things and be open to it yeah okay that's some good advice there um, so being a hometown Pueblo person, yep. growing up, you know, here, what resources would you tell people watching that are available here in Pueblo? Because a lot of people don't know of all the resources that are available to help small business owners. Absolutely. So th the nice thing about our town is there's so many things that you can tap into regardless of what your industry is. So uh, always when people are coming to me, I look at the various facets of the industry and where your resources are. So we have workforce opportunities. We have development opportunities through our economic development. Element. SBDC is a great way to consolidate a lot of things under one roof to get people started, especially if you're completely brand new and just need those joint parts so you don't have to go to Google and hope to fill in that gap, right? right? right, right. Um, and local connections through chambers and networking opportunities. I think everywhere you turn, there's a resource. It just depends on what you need and what works best for you. Right. And then I wouldn't un overlook kind of unspoken things like events and not necessarily going to pre-schedule things but looking for where your people may be I was strategic about that at the very beginning coming from the nonprofit world and wanting to expand and I would select events not because I necessarily wanted to go to them but because the people I wanted to work with would be there right and so that was a really important move and then the power of connecting people and making those good relationships who then can introduce you that hands down is how I even met you found out right. all the resources I have was usually through an introduction exactly you know and one of the the things about Pueblo is our chambers and I say chambers not every right. town has multiple chambers but our chain chambers are alive and thriving you go to other counties and things like that and they're not you know there's not that organization or that resource for individuals mm -hmm. and so that's a really smart idea because I don't think people think about oh maybe I should attend that event because there may be people that I want to work with there right good piece of advice so last and easy question this this is the what I call the free for all. What else do you want to tell them? You oh, know, wow. <laughs> what would be exciting, you know, like whatever you want to say. Well, um, one fun thing I guess I can share is kind of where things are going that I see technology wise and giving people an eye on where we are in Pueblo is 
I'm excited because I'm starting to see a shift happen with how people are looking at Pueblo. Some of it's through the work that I've done, but I've seen just a shift in people wanting to move here, learn more about our region. So if people are looking at Pueblo as their home base to start a business, there's a lot of opportunity here. And we have developments and we have resources that are sprouting up to help that become more successful. Okay. And I've traveled a lot. I've been to big cities, small cities, but there's this renaissance that often people talk about in Pueblo that I see expedited because of what's happened in the last couple of years. So I get excited to continue to have a business here and think about about what that means and there's some industries that are more prime for that than others exactly. but anybody in remote working in technical industries manufacturing there's a lot of really cool nuggets within our area that I see growing and I get excited to see businesses flourish because we keep people here and get them excited to stay like I did there's a lot of us that do mm -hmm. and stay in our hometown and we live in such a fun time to where you can stay and grow and build a thing here and still have access to the rest of the world, right? right? right. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I often tell people when I was 22 and bought my first house, at 22 I had a house and an office and that was possible because I chose Pueblo to stay. Exactly. You know, it's, um, I think when you're, you're here and then like I tell everyone, I took a sabbatical because my <laughs> jobs tr had me travel. So sure. I lived throughout the United States, you know, but when you come back, Pueblo's still familiar and, but if you know where things are and if you take the time to look, you can really see Pueblo changing and yeah. I've really seen that as well, yeah. you know, not to use our word pivot, but Pueblo is on a pivot, yeah. you know, if we really need to think of it. We are growing. I'm, I'm anxious to see the future. And, you know, we have shared challenges with a lot mm -hmm. of different places, but it's rewarding for me to talk about the people that have chosen to move here right. from somewhere else. And they are usually the, our biggest cheerleaders, most excited mm -hmm. to talk about Pueblo because they're coming from challenges in bigger cities or wherever. Right. Um, but we're not losing people or there's not a loss just because someone moved somewhere else. Like, you came back, but you went and explored other places. Mm -hmm. Someone came into Brian's hole when you left it. <laughs> and then when you came back, someone filled your hole where you left. Yep. You it's know. not a negative or a lacking thing, right? Not at all. Yeah. You know, and it, it's good to see the shift now. You know, we have younger people getting involved more. We have... Yeah people following through and I can see where the growth is going to happen. Um, I'm anxious to see what's going to happen yeah. in the next few years. Most and definitely. I would encourage people to get involved on their local level. Mm -hmm. um, you know, be engaged with what's going on with our city council and commissioners and even if you're just an observer at the beginning but really understand what's going on in your local community yep. makes a big difference in your business decisions and better handle on where our opportunities are. Exactly. So with yeah. that quote Thank you so much for participating in this interview series, Startup Pueblo. We revived it now that the pandemic is over. Mm -hmm. So we've had a lot of participation and we just want to see it grow. But as always, it's a pleasure talking to you. And thanks again. Thanks, Brian. Thanks.